Today, the topic of the presentation is uh, we're dealing with the orthodontic inventory, the instrument supplies, and understanding the appliance. So I try to make this presentation in a way that you have a brief introduction of all the inventories and what things you actually needed and what you need to order. And then the quantity, it depends on you. If you can do autoclave after every, uh, after over uh, every patient or you do it end of the day and how many patients you book. So if you book like two patients, so you are good with two or three set of instruments and then you can autoclave end of the day and you can utilize it for the next day. So I started with the five sets, okay? And it's more than enough. And you can even start with the two pairs and you have two patients booked because you have more of the general dentistry than the orthodontic and you can keep adding on. The most important thing is you need to have everything in place. So instead of having uh, one set of instrument five times, you try to gather instruments which are in need. So there are thousands of orthodontic instruments. If you go to the catalog, it's very confusing, but everything you don't use it in clinic practice. Even today, like even how complicated the procedure I do, I don't use all the catalog instruments. I have my favorite set of instruments that I use it in the same procedure and some of the instruments I can use for two or three purposes. So I know that one instrument I can use it for a couple of the reasons, okay? So same like that, I have only choose the instrument for you that you needed the most and they are the one you can utilize the most. Coming to the introduction, orthodontics is a study of diagnosis, prevention, and treatment of the irregularity of the teeth in the jaw. Orthodontic instruments are used in conjunction with fixed and renewable appliances. For orthodontics, it is essential to know that the instrument that have been used routinely, it is expected to increase the working knowledge of the orthodontist and also prevent the misuse of more delicate instruments. So you need to know that which instrument can't be used on the hard wire, especially the cutters, and which instrument you can use on which set of the wires so that you cannot end up in breaking the tips because some of the tips of the orthodontic instruments are very delicate and you have to use it appropriately. What are the features of orthodontic instruments? Orthodontic instruments are made up of stainless steel. They are extremely corrosion resistant and they have a cutting insert and tips which are made up of hard metal. The tips of the instruments are made up of tungsten carbide tips. They are stiffer and denser than the steel. So when you're going to buy the instruments, you have to see which instruments you are taking they are majorly made up of tungsten uh, stainless steel, but the tip of the instrument could be of tungsten carbide. So those instruments which come with the tip of tungsten carbide, they are very nice instruments and they are expensive. They have a better grip. And I would prefer you one set you buy, which is very good in um, technology with the tungsten tar carbide tip, and the other set, you can have a regular instrument, okay? So you have a feel and a grip that what's the difference does it make? Because if you get the instrument with the tungsten carbide tip, the grip is very good. So if you are a beginner and you want to hold the wire with the proper, um, you know, sensation, you will find and you enjoy the grip of the tungsten carbide. But the problem is that it should not drop. If the plier drop by the assistant, the tip comes out, okay? So the handling of the instruments of, because they are very expensive, it should be handled with, uh, with care. Then these instruments have a shape and a screw joint, which are designed to meet the requirement of the orthodontist to open and close. So you don't have a stress and a strain in your joints. Then they are usually gold braces to increase the instrument life. life. They have a rounded tip, so they don't poke, and they are comfy and safe to use inside patient mouth. And they have a serration on the working end, 
So all the instrument when you buy, you see it should have a serrations. They are very important because when you have a serrations in the tip, it improves the grips, okay, grip of the instrument. So even in our residency, I remember when we were buying our instrument, we checked with our seniors because supplier give you a variety of the range. So whenever you buy the instruments, you should have, uh, you can show it to me that which ones you are by, I can guide you for that. You can even visit in my clinic if you are available or show me the pictures, uh, close up of the tips and the beads. So you know that they have all the requirements which we need, especially you are paying a premium price, make sure they have serrations rounding tip, um, the joints are very soft. They can open and close without giving you any stress. And they should be gold braces with the carbide tips. And um, of course they are made up of stainless steel. First instrument, this is called a separator placement plier. The separator placement plier look like this. It only needed if you are putting the bands for the patient. So nowadays we put a bonding tube on the molars, but sometimes you have to do the bending procedure. Like if you are putting the appliance like a habit, fixed habit breaker, if you're putting TPA or you are doing, if the bond from the molar tubes comes out very frequently, then you go to have a bend. So you should have one set of bending instrument always there in your clinic whether you need you putting the bands or not putting the bands in your practice. So keep one set ready. In one set of band, you have one separate applier, band feeder, and band pusher. Okay, this is three things which come for the banding. Okay, and in materials, you need a GIC. I usually like a dual core GIC, uh, which is called as light cure GIC instead of the chemically cure. How the separate applier looks? Separate plier is made up of a stainless steel and it has a spring back action. It is used for expanding elastic separators or separator ring before positioning them interdentally. So it gives a stretch to the separator. Barrel shaped tip prevents slippage of the module, reduce the risk of the tissue damage. So you have to look for the tip of the instrument. It should be barrel shaped, okay? Angle peak facilitate easier placement of the elastic in the anterior and the posterior region. Another thing you have to see is the angle of. It should not be straight. There should be angle in the separate applier that you buy because it helps in easy facilitation of the placement of the elastic separators. So these are the two important things when you, you have to look for purchasing the separate applier. Okay. Then the second set of the bending uh, set, placement set, is a band pusher. It looks like an elevator, okay? But when you see it, it has a small expanding rod with the angled pusher thing. And this portion, it is not clear in the picture, it has serration in it, which help in a better work workability. So the handle is cylindrical and the working end is serrated. It is used to push the band so as to seat them before you ask patient to bite. So you put a band on the patient, you see the size. When you see the size is perfect, it's closed and tight, then you put the band on the top of the tooth and you use the band pusher to push them interdentally and adapt and contour to the tooth. A hollow anatomically formed grip handle make the band pusher light and serrated rectangular tip provides for good transfer of forces when positioning the band. So this should be a very good instrument and should have a good control so that when you push it, the band go directly inside with a good adaptability. Then after you seat the band with a band pusher, you ask patient to bite on a band seater. Okay, so band seater you put in different position, interdentally, buccal cuffs, and palatal cuffs or lingual cuffs, and ask patient to bite three or four times so that the band get contoured with the, with the help of 
the pressure. The bend feeder is available in various shapes and are generally made up of high impact plastic or wood. The biting surface is generally thin inlay. Its shape is round, square or rectangular. Allow easy access to interproximal area with serrated surface finish. Square tip allow maximum grip and prevent slippage. It is used for patient to bite on surface with a thin inlay tip resting on the lug or badge, band badge. Now, which one I use? I have one of this one with a triangle shape and I also have a flat one like this. So this is a handle and it come out like a flat. So sometimes I use this and sometimes I use this. So getting a different type instead of getting one type of bent feeder is that sometimes patient is more comfortable in biting on this. And if the patient is not look good, then I ask assistant, now give me the flat one. Bent feeder, I would recommend you to have a variety. Okay, bent pusher, you can have one type. And then the third thing you need is band remover. So now I'm explaining you the bending procedure as well. So you first select the size of the band. The rule is that the band size should be very tight fitting. That if you don't even put any GIC or glue, it's still the band remain in the mouth. That's the key. Now, if you use a very tight fitting band, it is very difficult to put inside the patient mouth. So you make sure that you put a separator one week before and then you remove it. Now, separator, which type of separator you use? There are three different types of separators. You try to use as thick separator as possible. So it produce a bigger space and then it gives you more results. If the thick separator is not going inside the mouth, then you use the thin. If the thin separator doesn't go inside the mouth, then you use a brass separator, okay? So there are three types of separator, the brass separator for the very tight contact, for the moderate contact, you can use the thin separator and for having a loose contact where you think that you can able to put a thick separator, you start with a thick. If it not go, then thin separator. If it doesn't go, then uh, broad wire. So when you use a thick separator, you have a very good space open and the tight band can go easily inside and your bending procedure is very easy. And once you have put the band with a band pusher, then you put a band seated and you contour it. And after you have done all the contouring and you think that your position, like you can see both the cuts is equally, everything is very good. You, can, you should see at least two millimeter of the cusp tip. The band should sit properly. It should be parallel to the tooth, not to the occlusal plane. And it should seat evenly, mesiodistally and buccolingually. And when you think that you are perfectly sit, uh, seat the band, then you remove the band with the help of the band remover, okay? Then you put a GIC inside and then you sit it, seat it again. You use again the band pusher and the band seater with a very minor force because now it's a tooth form. It should not take any pressure. With a very little pressure, it should sit in the same perfect position. You clean the excess cement on the top and then you light cure and your bending is finished. So how you use a band remover, it is used to remove the posterior metal band with the maximum patient comfort. The tip is postured in the middle of the pad for easy removal of the band. So try to use it in the middle to have a grip. A plastic padded tip and the sharp removing beak with a light, slight pressure allow easy band removal. So this tip is on the top of the tooth. This one go in the gingival region, okay? The plastic had rest on the occlusal surface of the tooth and the sharp tip below the gingival contour of the band. The pressure at the handle causes the band to lift off the tooth. Now, don't apply too much pressure that you distort the band. It should be very light, gentle pressure to just lift off the band and then you just take it out 
and then you put dry it, put the cement on it, and pu put it back again. After you finish your bending in all molars, you can put the brackets. Now, to put the brackets, you need a certain instrument. To put the bracket, you have need a bracket positioning instrument. There are two types of bracket positioning instrument. You can buy both of them and you can uh, check which one is used for you. One, it looks like this star, square, and the other one, it looks like a rod. Okay, both of them is used for the same purpose, but it is for different, uh, different types. So if you see the star, you can see the size is four millimeter, it's five millimeter, three millimeter, two millimeter. So whichever millimeter you want, you take that corner. Okay, it is most this type of the thing is most frequently used as a bracket positioning aid. It is made of stainless steel. It accurately measures the height of the bracket placement from the incisor edges. What height you want from the edge? Which height you want to put your bracket from the edge? 3.5 millimeter, 4 millimeter, 4.5 or 5 millimeter. So when we go to the bonding, you will see that you put the braces at a certain level of the height. Okay. And then to maintain that level of the height, you need a bracket positioning okay if you use this norm of the correct height your bracket will always be in a good position it give you a good finish okay the flat how you use it the flat surface rest of the incisor or occlusal surface of the tooth simplify the seating of the bracket on the teeth with exactly the right distance between the bracket slot and the incisor edge with pencil lid or a metal Okay. Now, how you use it, you use it the same way. Here we have a different stuff. If we want 3.5 millimeter, we use this measurement. If you want 5 millimeter from the incisor edge, we use this end. If you use 4.5 or 4, we use this edge. So this, so this dev device simplifies the seating of the bracket of the tooth with exactly the right distance between the bracket slot and incisor edges. It is generally made of the aluminum or stainless steel. It accurately measures the height of the bracket placement from the incisor edge. Okay, so you have all the options, which option you want to use. Then you need a bracket holder. Uh, there are two types of the bracket holder. The one look like this, okay? And the other one look exactly like this, but they have a tip, extended tip. I usually, usually buy the one the bracket holder with the extended tip because the back tip, I use it to push the bracket uh, when I'm doing the bonding. So pressure against the tooth and the bracket. So it's a very thin blue material in between, which increase the bonding strength. So the bracket holder um, holds any type of the bracket from the white twin to the single uh, slot bracket, reverse direction type hangle, which on pressing the handle, open up the uh, tip. The beak are diamond shaped with serrated to grip to hold the bracket. So again, the tip should be have serration for better grip. Flat end of the handle, which is at the back, it's used to press the bracket into the position for bonding. Then you need, this is optional, but if you are a beginner, this will help you. It's called as orthodontic bracket card, a pad with a glue, which can hold the bracket. So if you are transporting from one place to other place, it is supported and it's, uh, the brackets are uh, engaged. So it's like, it is used to organize and hold the orthodontic bracket to facilitate quick bracket placement. The circle on the card corresponds to the particular tooth in the mouth, brackets are placed corresponding to the tooth to be bonding. Tape on the back of the card how to keep the bracket in place. So this white color is a tape, it's like a glue. And even if you want to put the bracket upside down so you can put a bonding material on top, you can do that, okay? Then 
you need a bracket remover flyer. For instance, you have put the bracket and it is not in the correct position. And over the time, you realize that even the roots are not straight. You need to reposition your bracket and you need a bracket remover prior. When you're removing debonding, you need a bracket remover, removing prior plier. Bracket removing pliers are used for removing bonded brackets. The white tip wedge between both the edges of the base of the bracket and the tooth surface easily help in lifting of the bracket. Now there are two types. There is a straight type which help in anterior teeth debonding. And there is a bracket remover plier, uh, plier which is 60 degree angle, which help to do removing of the uh, premolar brackets. Anterior debonding prior uh, can also be used for removing of adhesive remnants from the enamel after uh, debonding, okay? So you can use the same plier to scratch off any uh, attached glue. You can remove with this plier or you can use a tungsten carbide burr and you can use that for removing the extra glue on the teeth. So we are done with the bending. We are done with the bonding, okay? Now the third stage come placement of the wire. Now there are two types of the wire. There is a, which is arch wire, okay? And the other one is a ligature wire. For arch wire, we use a distal end cutter, okay? And for the ligature wire, we need to use the straight wire cutter. If you use the straight wire cutter to cut the main arch wire, you end up damaging your cutter. And if you try to use the distal end wire to cut the ligature wire, you end up spoiling and bending the wire because that thin wire can't be cut with the distal end cutter. So you have to buy both of these cutters, the straight cutter and the distal end cutter. And you need to know that when to use. So if you're using the arch wire, you use the distal end cutter. If you're using a ligature wire, you use the straight cutter. Now, a straight wire cutter, uh, the cutting edge is made up of stainless steel or tungsten carbide. The tungsten carbide tip is amazing, but you have to be very careful about that plier should not drop and that tip should not be used for hard wire. They are especially designed for accuracy right to the tip for a smooth cutting of the soft ligature wire and lock pins and elastomerics. Still and wire cutter is only used intraorally or extraorally for arch wires used for the braces, okay? It is used ex exclusively for cutting the distal end of the wire protruding out of the molar tubes. It has a safety mechanism to hold the cut arch wire so that it does not fall into the patient's mouth. So it's very beautiful. So you cut it and then you take it out. The wire come out from the cutter, okay? So it's a safety mechanism. Cut and take out the plier. The wire is there inside the safety lock. Then there is a hard wire cutter, which you have to keep in case we ever need to cut any hard wire or adjust the appliance, we not distort our uh, expensive instruments. Because this hard wire cutter is very cheap and it could have a metal tip or a tungsten carbide tip. Uh, for this one, I would recommend you just take a metal tip because we don't use it much. These are heavier and larger than the pin and ligature cutter. These are used to cut all the wires up to 0 0.02. Now we move towards the additional pliers which we need. So Adam's pliers, it's called as Adam claps. You have been exposed to this plier while you were doing the removal appliance in the clinic in final year. Okay, so be all aware of this Adam plier. Adam plier help in making the Adam claps which nowadays can be made by the lab. This is the important wire we have to keep in the clinic. It helps in adjustment of the Adam claps and it helps us to make some loops, okay? Adam plier is used for the fabrication of the Adam claps and has two smooth, smooth 
rectangular beak made of hard stainless steel with or without tungsten carbide tip since between the hinge pin and the tips of the beak is short the side of the beak are flat and the edges of the grasping surface of the beak are sharp and textured inner surfaces must not be polished but also must not be serrated or grooved when a wire is gripped at the tip of the beak there is no tendency for the wire to slip out of the plier it is also used for adjustment of the head gear and the face box then the other important plier which we need to keep in the clinic is called as a bird beak plier bird beak plier is extremely popular and versatile plier and it is designed for working round wire up to 0.03 inches in diameter so there are a lot of loops we make in the clinic with the help of the bird beak plier the working edges are carefully beveled and the diamond horn to prevent scoring so what you need to see is that this plier is serrated okay to have a good grip one side is like a cone other one other side is like a adam plier then you can have the standard light wire plier it looks like a bird beak but is a little bit taller okay it's longer and more gradually tapered beak than a bird beak plier so either you get the bird beak plier or you get this standard light wire plier both of them can be used for the same purpose okay the only reason you use this one since the beak is longer the tip is longer you can make the small diameter loops with a bird beak you have to go all the way up to the tip to make the loop okay it can come without or with serration i would recommend get with the serration with have a better grip it can be used for arch form and spring preparation and it can be used for hard wire up to 0.5 mm diameter so between bird beak and this standard light wire plier i would recommend you to get this one for more application okay then there is the third one is a jerabec light wire plier jerabec light wire plier has a shape which is slightly different from the other the standard light wire plier it has a three set of precision grooves so it looks like the same but here there is a groove three precision grooves it help in accurate bending and closing the loops the flat tip is serrated for firm grip it serves as a same function and can be used to bend the spring up to 0.5 mm diameter so you can either buy the jerabic wire uh plier or the standard light wire or the bird beak you have a choice you don't need all three varieties uh as a starter okay now this is a very important wire which we have to use it and we use it every day it's called as a wine guide wine guard plier wine guard plier is used to guide and move the arch wire in and out of the placement and bending the arch wire ends the bend in a beak facilitate easy grasping of the arch wire and guiding into the buckle tip it has a accurate closing serrated tip it is capable of bending hard wire up to the diameter of 0.5 mm recommend you to buy the tungsten carbide tip if you get it and it should have a serration and should have some angle e point plier this is also a very useful plier you use it to make the retainer wires um it has three precision aligned tips which ensure consistent bend in the lingual bar and wires it's capable of bending the wire up to the diameter of 0.03 inches it is also used for activation of the cord helix appliance so for making the retainer wire 
And for activation of the cord helix, you can use this three points of lines. Then this one is also important wire uh, plier, which is called as the edge wise plier. I usually use it to make the step bend or first order, second order, or third order bend. To make the first order and second order bend, you need only one of the edge wise plier. But to make a third order bend, you need two edge wise pliers. So if you place the order, make sure you order for two. And the tip of this wire should be carbide, tungsten carbide, because give you a better grip and sensation, uh, how much bend you want to put first order, second order. So if you have very cheap plier, you can't have a control in the angulation in the band you're putting in the wire. So ideal for bending the square and rectangular wire up to um, 1825, okay? Edges are, uh, are hardened to prevent wire scoring and to preserve the smooth area with the wire. The blades are parallel uh, when open and ensure accurate 90 degree bend, which we needed in first, second, third order bands. Okay. So ideally what we can use up to 1825 uh, stainless steel wire, we can use this plier. After getting the all the pliers, and the bending and bonding instruments, we need, what else we need? We need a impression trays. So the standard plastic, uh, the metal trays, which we use in the clinic, you can use them. Then you have to be careful that you have to make a border of it with a wax, okay? If you don't have that amount of the time to make a border or periphery, then you just purchase this plastic trays because these plastic trays help to take the impression uh, with accuracy till the depth of the sulcus, okay? Overextended impressions, because these trays are already have a good borders, okay? And it gives you the perfect impression you need for orthodontics, okay? They are usually perforated for better retention. They have a high flanges to record the full sulcus depth. It has handle for better crests during placement and removal. For orthodontics, we only use the plastic trays. Then coming to the retractors, we need three types of retractors. We need a lip retractor to take the occlusal pictures in photographs. We need a cheek retractors like this to take the side view pictures and then we need a bonding retractor like this or this they both are bonding retractors to help us to put the braces so these retractors are used for better visibility it is often used when bonding of the brackets and taking the photographs or during bonding um, yeah during the bonding of brackets they are available in the small and medium sizes they're available in the wing and wingless and interconnected wire design. This wire help as a tongue retractor, okay? And it is available as a transparent or in various colors. Then tongue retractor, I never use it personally. I usually control the saliva with the help of the cotton rolls and the saliva ejector. But if you are new and you are very uh, conscious about your moisture control because you think that the patient tongue is uh, pushing a lot of saliva, as a beginner, I would recommend you can try a tongue retractor, okay? It's a shield which is molded from the soft resilient plastic or uh, expanded polyestrine material that can be safely disposed of after each patient. Restrict the movement of the tongue to prevent moisture contamination and elevate the patient's fatigue by offering occlusal support during the uh, bonding procedure. So it's usually come tongue retractor with a, uh, what is called, um, mouth prop, right? So it's work as a mouth prop and the tongue retractor. So it help to ask patient to relax on it while the tongue is not coming and position. 
my style of is that I put the cotton rolls if I feel there is a lot of moisture. Otherwise, I put a suction in a right position and ask patient to bite on the suction. So the patient jaws are not tired during the bonding visit. Vertical sheet is, off, uh, is offset to provide adequate tummy space. Surfaces of the bite block are angulated and serrated for retention. The holes in the bite block facilitate placement and removal with a bird beak plier and permit attachment of the safety ring or allow insertion of saliva ejectors. So you can see here, the saliva ejector can go here and the patient can bite here and the tongue remain outside. The patient is relaxed, you are relaxed, and there is a good moisture control. Intraoral uh, mirrors, we have discussed in the photography session, there are two types, there are glass mirror or the stainless steel. We usually prefer the stainless steel uh, that you need to buy, okay? It aids in visibility when taking the intraoral photograph. It often used in conjunction with the cheek retractors. They are of different shapes and size. Okay. Then the other important plier we needed is methyl ligation plier. Uh, there are various pliers which can be used in techniques to put the ligature like O-rings or ties to the bracket. Okay. What I use is methyl wire. I find it's the best one. There are two types of it, the one with a straight peak and the other one with an angle peak. You can have a sorted of them. So whichever you find more convenient, you can use it. Usually angulated is used for the posterior region and the straight one, you can use it for the front peak. And they have, the tips have different level of respiration. Sometimes they have only in the top, some of them, the other one have the full beak. They are broad and the thin one. I usually like a very broad with a serrated. So the standard one, the standard tip is my favorite one, okay? Because I want the O-ring to be completely whole. If I get a thin one, sometimes the ties slip off during placement. So I find more comfortable with the standard beak, okay? Um, these Matthew needle holder has a convenient and practical design and it's ideal for ligation purpose. It has a serrated tip, which allow better gripping of the thin ligature and elastomeric modules. The handle has a locking mechanism here, okay? And a spring mechanism here that help the operator to quickly open and close the plier. Then you need a ligature tucker, okay? It looks like this. Sometimes the wire is not placed in the uh, slot properly. So this ligage attacker helps to push the wire and how to put the ties, okay? So this is a very good instrument you should keep in the clinic. The ligature adjuster and tucker is usually a double-ended or single-ended instrument, not in a working end, allow the operator to apply pressure to the arch wire to bend it into the bracket slot it is also used to tuck the cut ends of the ligature wires so that they can not hurt the soft tissues. So when you wear the uh, wire ligature, even to tucking in, this can be used. So it has three uses. You can help to make the ligature wire uh, tuck in. It helps to push the wire in the slot and it helps to put the uh, ligature, uh, rubber ligature. Then you need to buy a uh, interproximal reduction kit, okay? Now this is hand kit, okay? And it could be automatic uh, with a hand piece. It depends how much money you have to invest. Uh, either of it works very well. Hand kit, you, approx you have to use your hand and give a pressure, okay? And for the automatic, you just put in the hand piece like a burr with a tip, and then you use the slow speed handpiece to do the interproximal reduction. It is specially designed and developed for easy, efficient removing and recontouring of the interproximal tooth enamels. 
for widening of the contact point or for the removal of the overhanging felons. A steel strip with a feature grit on it on one side. So there are two types of the strips. They are single-sided strip and they're double-sided strip. When you want to uh, only strip one tooth, then you use a single-sided strip. But if you want to remove, you're doing the IPR and you want to remove 0.5 millimeter on the right and 0.5 millimeter on the left, and you want to use only one motion, then you can use double-sided strip. Uh, 